It has been a while, hasn't it? Firstly, I'd like to address the elephant in the room, which is not me. The notion why I have not put up a YouTube video for over a month. Now, there's a number of factors. Now, this is not a video anybody's requested. I say the video nobody asked for is this video. But I do think it's important to be transparent and authentic to show my journey when things are going great, but also when things are not as good as I would like it or not as good as it kind of should be. Hence, one of the reasons why I haven't been able to post a video, also not me wanting to. So this video is going to be slightly rambly, I've tried to make it as short as possible. Because I also want to share the reasons why, because that might help you understand life doesn't always go as you planned. But also some good news within this kind of chaos that's happened for the past month and a half. So I'll put different segments so you can at least go to which one you would like to hear about. So without further ado, let's get into why I stopped posting on YouTube. So I'd like to start with the most important one I feel that is not easy for me to bring up and talk about or even kind of confess and admit. But I do think it's really important to share that we do have these feelings, it's natural to do so. But it's what we do over time to combat it. And that is the notion, as you saw from the segment title, comparison. I started to kind of compare myself to other people who might have started YouTube, you know, this year compared to me, you know, many years ago. And some people have done really well, and rightly so. Their content seems to be doing well. They put great videos. And I got caught into that web where I put on this amount of videos. I spend a lot of time video editing, a lot of time crafting the videos, being myself on camera, you know, being, you know, getting the lighting and audio and all of this ready. So I put a lot in the production side, as well as, you know, trying to share really genuinely pieces of advice, in fact, genuine advice and content. But for some reason, it doesn't get picked up, it doesn't get viewed a lot. And I do enjoy making it all, but it does hurt when views are not as much as you would like, naturally. You know, and there is this notion of comparison and deep of joy, and you know, you shouldn't. It's easy to say, but it's sometimes quite natural, and you do it kind of unconsciously. You do it indirectly, where you think that's got you know a couple of hundred. I'm not even thinking about millions. I'm like a couple of hundred of views, and mine barely gets past fifty. So then, you know, I'm very good at genuinely not doing that. But for YouTube, because it's been such a grind, and I've been, I've learned. You know, if you check out check out my first video to now, it's a big difference how I am, how the production is but it does hurt a lot and I think that was a big factor in me you know maybe not having as much of a motivation as I normally do where you know I would prioritize something else because normally I would prioritize YouTube and you'll see later on in the video that don't worry I'm not quitting YouTube I enjoy it I love making videos but I think a stop was perhaps needed to reevaluate as you'll see in the next kind of few segments but yeah comparison and you know being perhaps envious of others and it's not healthy you know it's not just the feeling but it's not healthy to then allow you to dictate your um, kind of decision making and intention especially when i love making youtube videos but sometimes comparison you know demotivates you perhaps so that's one of the reasons why i kind of stopped but you'll see um, i'm not stopping forever unfortunately whether well, you like it or not now the other reason i wouldn't say a direct reason but perhaps why i've been more busy than usual is that i've actually been a video editor so a friend of mine who I'm at, I'm at college, uh, so high school in, in the US and in Canada in terms of equivalence, um, a friend I knew back then who, you know, we didn't kind of keep in contact for a while just because, you know, different cycles. And um, we kind of met up doing through social media. So his, his name is Yasser, as you can see here. He runs Microform, which is a pharmacy kind of e-commerce company and brand that provides you know, guides and courses to help those who are doing pharmacy to help them get through their pre reg and go on to you know, really good jobs post that. And I've been actually editing his YouTube videos. As you can see, these all these thumbnails, all these titles, all these transitions are all bit, and for me. I've been editing his videos for, for quite a while and that's been a great journey. I've been learning a lot from him because he's kind of ahead in the whole creating a brand, having a page where he has e guides and courses because I want to do that for, for research, right? So it's been a great kind of trade-off of knowledge and experiences. I'm helping him from the video side because I know more about that. He's also then helping for, him, for me to visualize how he runs it all, what he does, how he runs his brand, how he runs the microphone company. So it's been really insightful to learning you know, the tips and tricks and his thought process, but also being able to offer my, my experience and expertise and, and skills in 
making good videos from the video editor and giving him advice from there. So that's been a great, you know, kind of rekindling of a, of a friendship that you know, we had, that we're now building along. We have very, very similar, you know, thought processes and goals in life uh, with the way we run our social media platforms, the way we run, hopefully, you know, our content platforms. So that's going to be a, a great kind of partnership, a great, you know, friendship and bond for years to come i hope so if you just if you're watching this video do like and comment and then other people can see who you are but because i've been busy with him i've and coupled with the first segment which is being demotivated i've not had as much desire to to make my own videos because i've not just enjoyed but been busy editing for him but then coupled with like i said what happened about comparing i've used that sometimes as just as a escape to then not focus on my videos when i should be so that's another reason why I've not been uploading but it's also a good thing because I'm learning about YouTube and learning about the shorts algorithm I'm not going to spam you with shorts by the way let me just clarify that now but I'm learning about it I'm learning about how to run my YouTube channel better um, through microphone so that is the other reason and the third reason is that many of you might know you might have seen it on my Instagram page here I'm a .phd if you do want to follow that um, I've been working with Desk Board Buddy. Now, now I've been working with them for quite a while, you can see over here. Here's a little kind of screen grab of their website and the products that they do. Incredible products, really premium quality. I've got them here, I've got them one, one, one over here. You see them just over here right now, the different products that they have. And I've been working with them in terms of helping with the social media management, but more so the kind of influencer marketing and, and you know the video editing and the photo kind of photography elements of the whole business and um, that's been really busy recently you know i've been making maybe more videos or editing more videos so again video editing for for somebody else and again like i said in america i'm learning about youtube social media i've been learning a lot from josh who's the founder and, and my boss um, from canada you know by the way canadians you guys are like really nice um, because josh is amazing and he's taught me a lot because he's also told me about the business side of things so how to run a business a digital business how to run your pages, your landing pages, advertisement, you know, what to look for, like hooks and CTAs and all these other terminologies, you know, return on investment and um, add to click rate and all of these things. I've been learning through him. So although I've been, you know, again, neglecting my, I think probably the best way to say it, neglecting my YouTube channel, I have been learning a lot in the meantime. And uh, so I've been busy with Josh with a lot of, you know, shooting photos, videos, editing, I'm helping you know to decide what to do for the future of the business which has been really exciting so i've been gaining a lot of insight that i probably wouldn't have done if i didn't work for them and in this kind of month and month and a lot it's been really busy there's been a lot going on and um, i've been kind of riding a wave and learning a lot and you know trying to deliver as well so i am you know providing value that i'm an asset to the team and again i've been that's why i use the comparison as the first segment because all of these kind of compound that you know, neglecting feeling or being demotivated because oh this is going well, uh, microphone's going well. Okay, I'll do I'll do YouTube later. I'll do YouTube because I you know I was comparing that to people said so, you know forget it, forget it. But that's another reason as to why I've been really busy than normal, especially with the notion of making YouTube videos. Now, lastly, this is not an excuse, but more of a short-term hit for long-term gain type of mentality which is although i haven't been posting on youtube and that might not help in for a number of reasons what i have been doing is trying to prepare and plan my platform which is going to be called research tribe as you can hear and this will be a platform that can offer, offer hopefully more kind of product services you know content that all to help researchers advance and to give you know, more advice more tips and tricks more you know actual tools more kind of ticks and guides and checklists and all sorts to help researchers excel and not be where i was when i did my phd as many of you may know now all the torturous things i had to go through um a number of things you know the mental health the lack of support the lack of funding the lack of you know input i started this youtube channel and instagram page and all that i do to try and make sure students don't go through what i went through and i now want to take it one step further and many of you might follow me on Instagram, might have seen a while ago, I mentioned stories about me making these e-guides where I would condense large amounts of my you know, experiences and expertise into a one PDF download or one PDF kind of page where you could print it, stick it on your wall or have it on your phone or your laptop and that would give you concise but tailor-made experiences, tips and tricks 
on that particular form of research. So for example, if you don't know, I'll just give you a bit of a crash course. There's going to be four events, what I call the four pillars of research. So that's preparing research, that's conducting the research, that's writing research, and then it's also presenting research, right? Because within the entire PhD, you are preparing to study designs, experimental design, you're doing the work, so you know how to be more effective in the lab, how to be more effective in terms of you know, collecting your data, but then you're going to be writing it. That might be a paper, it might be an abstract, there might be a report for your you know, transfer from one year to another. And of course, it's also going to be your thesis. But then you're also presenting. You're presenting at a conference, you're presenting to your, your supervisors, to your examiner, which is the survivor. So there's so many forms of presenting. So I thought, why not share detailed advice, but in a concise manner on each of these segments? So depending on wherever you are in your PhD, you can have all four if you wanted to, or you can just choose which one you want. And hopefully that would be like a good platform where you can just dip into whenever you need to to find little tips and tricks dedicated to that particular part of research. So that's just the start. There's going to be so much more, but it's going to be on a research dedicated website. I'm hoping um, to make it in the near future. So I've been busy planning that, designing that, making those e guides. I'm hoping to share in the next month, I will say, um, at the latest. Uh, don't quote me, that's what I'm trying to do. But hopefully um, I can share those so then you guys can make use of it from now and for the rest of your master journey, PhD journey, or even if you are a postdoc like me, hopefully those can still be helpful. So those are not excuses, but reasons as to why I've perhaps neglected my YouTube channel. But now I want to talk about what is to come. So short answer is I'm in YouTube for the long haul and that might be many years, that might be decades, doesn't matter. Because if I look at the span of what I enjoy, you know, comparing as many of you probably might say in the comment section or might be watching this video, we don't compare, be you. And it's what I am doing, you know, what I've been doing for so long. But sometimes you, it does get to you and, you know, you stumble, you fall, but you get back up like I'm doing right now. And as I showed you, there is a lot of good things happening behind the doors that you don't see perhaps on YouTube. But part of that is now I'm going to be hopefully sharing more different strands of what I hope to be my YouTube channel. Right now there's over 50 videos dedicated to research tips and advice. How to do a PhD, how to prepare for a survivor, issues with your supervisor, many writing tips, many things about you know PhD interviews. There's tons of videos that are dedicated to those people who want to watch it. But now I want to help expand. I'll still be making those, but I want to help expand the YouTube channel. Where I might be sharing more kind of 30 day challenges where it's research, but I'm experimenting on myself and then sharing the results. So I've done many 30 day challenges, but never made a video about it. But I do want to help so I can share my authentic you know, take from being a researcher but also basically conducting an experiment on myself and sharing the hypothesis, the aims, objectives, methods, meaning the 30 day challenge but also how I found it, did it benefit me, would I stick to it and I, it's, for me it's a win-win because I get to experiment on myself and hopefully improve myself but then I get to make a video about it and share kind of my results to the world so hopefully that might inspire other people so it's I would love to do that, right? So that's going to be coming soon in, in the next uh, couple of weeks. But also vlogging. We're going round and round in circles about, you know, what, sh what vlogging setup should I have, what camera and what gimbal or tripod. And all it's, all it's doing is just stifling the creativity of going out there, just like I used to do when I started the YouTube channel, with my phone right over here and just vlog. So I'm hoping to rekindle that and share kind of vlogs where it could be more lighthearted, more not kind of scripted and I might be sharing some tips on a certain topic perhaps or my thoughts on a certain topic or recent events or historic events and sharing my kind of two cents on that something you can watch in the background something you can watch because there might be nice nature stuff around me so that's something you can also look into um, if you want to obviously subscribe if you haven't done so already and that's essentially it that's what's been happening that's why I stopped using YouTube that's also why I'm back hopefully bigger and better than ever with not just advice videos but blogging videos day day challenges videos different experiment videos different you know challenges that i try and you know share my results from it because if i improve and then i also share with you it's a win-win right so this is definitely the video nobody asked for but it's also a video i wanted to make um, as a reminder to myself to make sure you know i'm being transparent also sharing updates whether it's good or bad so stay tuned for, for more YouTube videos, I've got a few lined up already, so I just need to finish editing them and then I can get them out to you. I might be posting one or two maximum shorts a week, just to you know share some kind of shorter content for those of you who are subscribers and kind of new audiences potentially around the world. So 
don't hate me for that if you don't like shorts um i post shorts on instagram and tiktok so i thought to bring a bit more shorts to the game on youtube so i rambled on for 18 minutes so probably 12 13 minutes i apologize but i hope it's been worth it um it's good to be back hope you're all doing really well as well and i shall see you in the future videos don't worry i am not going anywhere i'm here for youtube for the long haul however long that may be See you soon.